Joining us now, Sylvia Jablonski, CEO and Chief Investment uh, Officer of Defiance ETFs. Uh, Sylvia, it, um, do you ever not think long term? Because that, that's, that's your point today. Let's, let's take a step back and, and try to figure out why we're doing this in the first place. And it's, it's to build wealth. And if you are going to build wealth, it would probably be better to go into, for example, the NASDAQ now better than it was uh, three months ago. Absolutely. Good morning, Joe. Well, I, I think, you know, it, it feels like the obvious strategy, right? You sort of want to spend your life, especially if you're younger, dollar cost averaging into your positions and, and you know, you accumulate wealth over time. But what we actually see and what we've seen in the last couple of months is investors running for the hills. So they've either been parked on the sidelines and not invested at all, or else they've been in the market. They've seen that 10 percent correction. You know, two thirds of the S&P 500 names are actually below their 200 day moving average. And you see the sell off in those names. So I think that, you know, investors often get this sort of panic tick, right? You have uncertainty in the Middle East. You have uncertainty with the Fed. Um, debt issuance this week. There's there's sort of all sorts of unfamiliar things that are going to happen in the next couple of months, and that has sent investors out of the market. But really, they should be buying now. To your point, would you rather buy Nasdaq 10% off of its July high, you know, now, or wait until it rallies 10% into the end of the year? I don't know. But if it's going down another 10, obviously you'd want to wait. What what about the the notion of of yields even on the short term with the inverted yield curve? You can get paid fairly well for, for two years. What about just putting everything in a two-year? Well, I, I think that might be fine for some people, right? I think if, if you just want absolute security, you know, sort of zero risk, you're, you know, kind of a little bit older and, and just, you know, don't want to be in equity markets at this point, or if you're just looking to diversify a portion of your portfolio, I think it's perfectly reasonable. Who doesn't like 5%? You can, you know, you can get 5% CDs now. Um, it's pretty easy to, to get that return. But again, NASDAQ is 10 percent off of its high. So and longer term, you know, annualized return of stock markets simply outperform yields, you know, sort of 100 percent of the time. We're in this weird sort of warp zone again with the uncertainty and volatility. So I think it's reasonable to diversify, but you certainly want some stock exposure in your portfolio. You know, I think the things that are going to drive the future are actually things like technology, are things like artificial intelligence and not necessarily, you know, kind of the four to five percent steady any returns on treasuries. The, some people, and we've seen a lot of interest in some of the, the funds that have longer dated maturities, there's a, a notion, and some smart people recently have said, this, I'm ready to buy bonds. I think the bear market in, in long-term bonds is over. So I guess you could do some two years, some 10, and, and maybe even longer, maybe a fund there, and then technology, and have this be all over the place, have all your bases covered. Would that make sense? You think long bonds are, are attractive here? Will they rally? Yeah, I, you know, I do think it makes sense because right now the returns are just are simply there. So, again, I think it depends on also where you are sort of in your career, whether you're looking to retire, things like this. If you're close to retirement, I, you know, I, I think it's hard to argue that picking up cash-related products or alternative income types of products makes a lot of sense. It certainly does. But if you're kind of out there and you have, you know, a decade or more to go or several decades to go, then you want to be in stocks. I mean, that's where the return is going to be. You'd be uh, looking at beneficiaries of AI. You think this is going to be a super cycle yeah. of, of AI investment. So where would that put you? I did. And I, and I heard, heard your comment about, you know, a lot of people are hanging their hat on that. I'm, I'm certainly one of them. So I think, you know, if you look out to 2030, the projected compound annual growth rate of all things AI is essentially 30 percent or so. Um, I, I like, you know, NVIDIA has fallen off of its high. I, I, you know, I realize the stock price is incredibly high, but they're 90 percent of the GPU market. AMD is 10 percent of the GPU market. So all of these, you know, fascinating technologies like machine learning, quantum computing, you know, AI, robotics, replacing the workers that we don't have in factories, in some cases with technology, really makes the case that there's something here. And all of these things going on in Washington, you know, that certainly matters about, you know, kind of the opinion of AI and, and things like this. But when it comes to just actually improving productivity in factories and businesses, you know, in the healthcare system and research in, in banks and, you know, calculating credit, these are tangible things that can actually bring revenues in and costs cost for companies in the long term. So I do think it's going to be a super cycle, and I think it's going to change the way we live, work, and, and play.